may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We've just read a number of parables from a, a collection put together early in the life of the Church and copied into chapter 13 of St Matthew's Gospel, sometime after 70 AD. Today's parables are easily misunderstood. They are the parables of the mustard seed, the yeast in the bread, the treasure hidden in a field, the pearl of great price and the great trawl of fish. And in this sermon I, I'm going to try to explain three of them because they kind of belong together, the last three. The hidden treasure, the valuable pearl and the catch of fish. Sounds very attractive doesn't it when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. It sounds attractive because finding hidden treasure is like an unexpected prize. It's like you've been buying a lottery ticket with your groceries almost incidentally every week and never really expecting to win when suddenly your ticket hits the jackpot. Wow! Now all sorts of things that were once impossible suddenly become possible. Maybe that is one of the things the Kingdom of Heaven is like. But no, wait a minute. What did he say? The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Now what is this all about? We all know that money that isn't moving in some way is money that's just losing its value. So what's the point of finding treasure and hiding it? Surely Jesus isn't telling us to seek the kingdom by finding it and then hiding it away. No, that can't be right. How are we supposed to understand this metaphor? Well, the clue is in the next bit. The person who wants the treasure has hidden it because he wants it. And he doesn't want anyone else to have it. He desires it so much. So, I quote, then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And of course then the treasure is all his. He repeats the point with the story about the valuable pearl. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of pearls, of fine pearls. And he says, and on finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold it. He sold all that he had and bought it. He sold all that he had and bought it. Now here we are getting closer to the real meaning of the kingdom. The person who finds the treasure and the merchant who finds the pearl are not supposed to be us anxiously seeking the kingdom and personally paying a great price for it. No, the allegory is that the merchant is God is in fact Jesus himself, who from on high saw something very valuable and wanted to gather that valuable thing to himself. That valuable thing was us. He desired us and wanted us. And he was willing to give a great price for us. We know his story. His state was divine, but he didn't cling to equality with God. He emptied himself and took on our human state. And even then, there was a greater price to be paid. And he paid it by dying on the cross for us. Yes, Jesus came to gather all of us to himself. The good, the bad and the ugly. That's what he said next. The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore and sat it and sat down. Now his desire for us was so great and he paid such a price for us. How sad it would be if he should find his beloved wanting. But that is exactly what he's telling us now to beware of. Just as when we go to a pick your own and do some fruit picking, we will gather in the good fruit, but the fruit that has gone bad we will reject. So here, in the parable of the fishing net, we see the catch being picked over. Um, 
He has paid such a price for us. How sad it would be if we had not lived up to his expectations. This is a call to all of us. On the one hand, to see the greatness of his sacrifice. And on the other, to live up to the greatness of his love by leading lives that are worthy of so great a saviour. We can never deserve the grace of God. But having received it in such generous and loving measure, our response should be to try to be like him here on earth in the hope of being gathered to him amongst his people in this world with the hope that this will continue in eternity in the world we cannot yet see. Amen.